Hello again. This is the first of three videos on using the more advanced debugger features in C-Line. There follows another video introducing the more fundamental bread and butter features. Now, broadly speaking, we can divide debugger features into two categories. There's a static part, how you can examine and interact with your program state while it's suspended, and a dynamic part, moving the execution pointer through the code at runtime. We'll also look at a number of features that relate to the process itself, or even other processes or machines. But to avoid keeping you in suspense, this video will cover the suspended part. Now, we've already seen how we can examine the values of variables but we can take that much further. For a start, we can set variables as well. We can easily change integers, for example, either from the set value on the context menu or by using the keyboard shortcut, that's F2 here, and then just type a new value into the field. Of course, those changed values can impact what happens next. But it can even work with more complex types like strings. Now, variables are reevaluated on every step. But if you have a lot of variables, or they're complex to evaluate, or you're just stepping through a lot, that can slow you down. So you can disable automatic evaluation by muting the variables. While muted, you'll just see the word load in the variables view. And if you click on one of those loads, then that specific variable will be evaluated. Of course, you can unmute again to resume loading at any time. It can sometimes be useful to pop up a separate inspector window for specific variables, which you can do with inspect variable. This may give you more space to open it up, but also to keep it around if you switch to another stack frame or thread. But a more advanced way to examine variables is with evaluate expression. On first sight, this looks much like inspect variable, although the value is only shown when you click evaluate. But rather than just a single variable, this box allows you to evaluate more complex expressions. Simple arithmetic is supported, for example. But we can also type in member variables. And perhaps more significantly, we can call methods, including operators. Do note, though, that the debugger relies on symbols available at link time. And due to inlining and other effects, even in a debug build, you may not always be able to call all functions. And this may vary between compilers, or even different versions of the same compiler, or library versions, so do bear that in mind. But we can also go even further, and even mutate values here. We can even create new variables to use in more complex expressions, and at this point we need more space, so we'll use this option here to switch to a multi-line editor. Of course, these new variables are purely scoped within the evaluation here. And if we're mutating program state, then every time we hit evaluate, it's going to execute that snippet again. But in this case, it's going to keep changing it. Now, going back to a simpler non mutable example, you can see here that you can also add any expression crafted here as a watch. Now, we haven't looked at watches yet, but of course, you can add any simple variable as a watch directly as well. Watches appear in the variables view, but are effectively pinned there. They'll be reevaluated as you step around or move up and down the stack, even if they're no longer in scope. So you'll sometimes see an error, and that's okay. One more thing you may want to do from the variables view is to find where a particular variable is declared. And you can do that with jump to source. Now, in the first video, we saw that in addition to the debugger variables view, values are also shown overlaid in line in the code. Now, recently, this feature was expanded to also allow you to interact with inline values, opening them up like you can in the debugger view. You can even add inline watches here. So far, all of our integers have been displayed in decimal digits, but it's often useful to see them as hex. Now, as I recall this, this is still an experimental feature, but you can enable that in the settings under Build Execution Deployment, Debugger, C++, and Set, Show Hex Values for Numbers. It's usually best to make sure the display alongside the original value is set as well, as both can be useful.
Seeing variables visualized is usually exactly what you want. But sometimes we just need to be able to see the matrix, or in this case, array, as its underlying memory. So if we right click on any variable in scope, we can view it in our memory view. This shows us the raw bytes as both hex values and ASCII characters. In this case, we're looking at the vector class layout itself. We can see here it's taking a pointer to the vector. Probably not what we want. But we can type expressions here too, just like in the evaluate dialog. So if we call the data method, we'll now see the memory pointed to, even though the vector itself has a size of zero. This is the data that was there before. So be careful with those passwords. Of course, you can also paste raw memory addresses into this box as well. Now we copied that one from the column at the side, but if that column is distracting or taking up too much space, we can hide it. And we can also get to recent locations and expressions with the drop down here. And if you're debugging an embedded device, you'll get a peripherals view, letting you see the state of pins and other hardware values right in the IDE. You'll need an SVD file, and then select which peripherals you'd like to see. And now this view will show you the real-time values of the selected peripherals. You can search for specific values just by typing, and you can switch to visualization between hex, decimal, octal, or binary. So that's a look at what you can do with CLINES debugger while suspended. We looked at setting variables, muting and inspecting them, evaluating expressions, adding watches, interactive inline hints, hex and memory views, and the peripherals view for embedded devices. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the more dynamic features, breakpoints, watchpoints, and setting the execution pointer.